I've edited uh, the uh, there was a podcast that I edited in a way that it started without you uh, screwing up. <laughs> it's actually one of the best things. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, yeah. And then and then it's a <laughs> cut. <laughs> <laughs> So now it's all 42, few cool materials, tantalum is there, a two-tone in tantalum is just mm-hmm. crazy. I, I really love it. It's sort of an 80s vibe to it, but, mm-hmm. I, but I do like it. So there are so many watches, like we try and see as many of them as, as we possibly can, but even so, like it's, it's, it's really challenging. Yeah. Um, what I saw was the new uh, Speedmaster Dark Side of the Moon Apollo 8. Uh, super cool piece. Mm-hmm. Finally, something that's really extraordinary. It's not just a you know a solid dial and mm-hmm. just this and that. It's not even a limited edition. And I think it's not because Omega knows it's going to sell like yeah. crazy. And I think we're gonna see another like dark side of the moon uh, sort of push. It's thinner, uh, wears a lot better. Anybody who thought that the previous sort of generation of the dark side of the moon was not wearable due to the size. I mean, those are thick watches and they shaved it back by almost three millimeters. The, the uh, reason shifting to a manual one. Yeah, it has the same movement as the moon watch. So it has the same hand-on chronograph movement that you get in the regular yes. moon watch. But the movement itself is spiced up in a few ways because it has on the dial side, it has an open dial so you guys can see it has mm-hmm. like the surface of the moon. On, and it actually is uh, asymmetrical. So if you look at it, the print on the sub-dials and all that, it's just it's a very cool piece. And another interesting thing that we learn is that, well, if you know Omega very much, like the back of your hand, then you will know this, but we were told that in 2019 is going to be a crazy year. <laughs> so many anniversaries. It's there was like literally every anniversary that they work with Bond Olympics. I mean, everything has something going on next year. It's There's uh, just, <laughs> he couldn't even mention anything. Type of movement, collection, whatever you name yeah. it. Something big is happening next yeah. year. Next year is going to be crazy. So this year, 125. Excuse. So that's a mega look forward to the hands on uh, pieces on a block to watch. We're going to cover them. Um, with live images, of course. Mm-hmm. Then Brightling, we saw the number timer eight that's been out for months now. Everyone knows what mm-hmm. what it's about. Uh, but we also saw the word time, which was not on the word yeah. tour because they did a word tour to debut the number timer eight. It was in, uh, I think it was in Shanghai, it was in Zurich, and then it was in New York. But now we saw it hands on, and we also saw Kern's impact on some of the other collections, mm-hmm. like the Navi timer, not the Navi timer eight, but the Navi timer eight. And the Navi oh, One, you know, in, in uh, the smaller case size, where it's really, really nice. Is it the Navi One? There's, there's a 41, Navi Time 41. It used to be a heritage piece, That's but right. now it's all Navi Time 41. Um, so, so there's that. And we also see there's the Brightling logo, is the vintage one that you saw on the Heritage Super Ocean. It's the same logo now everywhere. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of cool things happening, happening in the Brightling world. And, and just to echo your sentiment about the World Timer, that my absolute favorite complication. I really like how they executed it. It's a jumping hour and a jumping 24 hour. So uh, pop the crown out to the first position, rotating in one direction advances the 24 hour disc in one hour, in, in one zone increments, one hour increments. 
and then uh, rotating it the opposite direction rotates the hour hand uh, in one hour. It's a mm -hmm. super cool piece, uh, really functional. I always thought it was weird that you know a, a brand kind of really centric around uh, flight and travel and all of this didn't have a super solid world timer, and now they do, and it's a killer piece. It's, it's sized really nicely, 100 meter water resistant. It's a great sports watch. That's true. Speaking of uh, great sport watches, we saw Casio G-Shock. It was like a like a 90 minute meeting. We went hands on with a full metal 5600 series, which is just crazy. And they were like, "Well, actually, we just launched a watch today." And I'm like, "Well, we wrote about it like three or four weeks ago, because for some weird reason, most of the Japanese brands, let's be fair, don't get PR at all. <laughs> so they, they launched a watch in Japan, as I say, three four weeks ago, which is a crazy important piece. It's the first time ever that it's in full metal, full metal bracelet." There's one that's polished steel, so it's not coated. A lot of guys were asking, yep. is it coated or what, what's going on there? Full it's steel. Just, yeah. And then there's the IP Gold, and there's something else that we're not allowed to talk about just yet, but it's coming out later in the year. And that was something that actually everybody at the table immediately just grabbed yeah. to photograph, and they were like, no, 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 you can't, you can't. You can photograph it, but you can't. So, yeah, that's coming. That would be pretty exciting. We have pictures, and we promise when they launch it in Japan a couple of weeks before they launch it everywhere else, we will launch it too. Seiko is jumping on the vintage bandwagon, which is a little bit painful, I think, for most of the team uh, for us to see because it's just, you know, Seiko is a modern brand. It was, I, I understand the history, I know the history, but it was always about just pushing a little bit forward. And it's mm -hmm. like this anniversary, and oh yeah, it's like this movement or that movement or this model. You know, I don't really want to get a Seiko from 1992, I just said something, you know, like I don't really care. If I wanted, I would just go online and buy one from that era. I want the latest and best that Seiko can produce, and also, speaking of Grand Seiko. So there's, there's that, a lot of skews there as well. Yeah, a ton of skews between Prospects, uh, Presage, mm -hmm. and, uh, and Grand Seiko. And Grand Seiko, as always, is, is producing some of the most interesting and dynamic dials that you know we, we've seen at the show I think there's there's immense there's enough variety in there there's definitely something for everybody but this yeah. is the year where there's, there's, there's the most variety I would say. Stamped dials I have yes. because I was wondering are these laser engraved or, or, or engraved like sort of a guilloche way I knew it was not guilloche I could see but it was it was actually pretty mm -hmm. intricate and high quality, but it, it's actually stamped. But some really weird designs there, which is which is which is quite cool. Uh, we are at the at the place of Undone, or just outside the fair. Actually, yeah. we're hanging out here. Yeah, big thanks to the guys at Undone for giving us kind of the crash pad. Yeah, you're yeah everybody's, everybody's pretty chill at the end of a show day, so it's great to have a great time with Bob. Got some more watches to check out tonight. Uh, it's more important to be So let's get ready to end the show, but. Uh, We'll be back at it tomorrow. We'll be looking at it tomorrow. I think. Uh, no idea. Just don't even watch it. So don't watch even it. don't even think about it an hour ahead. I do know that, uh, that we've got a, we've got a couple of videos over here. Yeah, we still have a few hundred images to go through tonight. Edit articles to be assigned and all that. So we are going to break this up right here. Thank you for tuning in for today. Looking forward to having you tomorrow. And looking forward to seeing all the knowledge. Absolutely. Cheers. Cheers.